Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to Inspired by Islam. Uh, let's begin with the uh, praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salam. Ashafi al-anbiya wa mursali nabina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, welcome. And we have a special guest for you today, Julian Bon. Welcome to our show, sir. Thank you. You know, I'm very honored that you made a time for me. Um, I've been following you for a long, long time, a few years now. And um, I know you've been studying Islam for the last 18 years. I mean, especially the uh, tafsir and the translation of the Quran. But you are Christian by uh, faith and you are a priest yourself. So you're a learner. I'm not, I'm not a priest. I'm a lay person. <laughs> and also you are, um, I would say you're a champion of interfaith work. Um, you, st you also established a organization called Musl Christian Muslim uh, Forum. Forum. That's really interesting. And I, I met a lot of your friends uh, from America and other places and they talked about you really highly, mashallah. That's, that's, that's the um, good thing. When you're not around, when someone talks about good, good about somebody, that makes the difference. Um, so thank you for making time and tell me about your journey regarding Quran because I'm really mm. interested. Uh, you're from a different perspective or a different faith and you studied Quran. How do you see Quran? Because we as Muslims say this is the actual word of God, a divine word of God. Quran is untouchable and untouched. The Prophet's words are hadith but Quran is the actual word of God and you studied uh, and for 18 years and also now you actually writing the blogs and uh, you are actually teaching Muslims to be honest I learned a lot of things from you uh, so tell me about it tell me about that okay. journey please so I'm mean, everything that I learned I learned from Muslims in the first place anyway I first started reading the Quran in 2000 I was looking for something to read on the commute into work and I bought a copy of the Quran in a second-hand bookshop in Wales in 1985 and it sat on my shelf untouched for 15 years and then... I'm not asking your age now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Then I decided to, to read it and Rodwell had the idea of putting the surahs, the chapters, in chronological order. So it starts with the one which says recite when the angel appears to Gabriel, uh, sorry, when Gabriel appears to Muhammad in the cave <coughs> and he doesn't know how to respond to the angel. So it starts in a very strong and powerful way and I read through it and I was intrigued that he changed the order and having read it, I thought, okay, it was an interesting read. Some of it was rather like the Bible but I don't really know what Islam is about, having read it. So I went on some of the very early internet chat rooms and got into interfaith discussions and mostly interfaith arguments, trying to find out a bit more. And um, it was two years after that that I got the opportunity to join the Archbishop of Canterbury's Christian Muslim Initiative. And then I started to meet and work with Muslims and I read the Quran again before doing that because I thought I really ought to read it again as preparation because I'm sure we'll be talking about the Quran a lot and then we didn't. It was just part of the interactions that unless you're in some kind of study circle doesn't seem to come up in conversation. Yeah, yeah. Have you met many Imams or in, in that level though, who knows Quran to be honest? And were they, did, you, did they not use Qur'an for conversations? Or? So I've met lots of Imams and there would be recitations at the beginning of events. But in terms of the actual conversation and what does this verse mean mm. and I read this and I thought such and such, then that didn't really happen. I was talking to one Imam about the, the verse, um, no other religion except Islam will be accepted and I was trying to op open up the question with him about whether it was Islam with a big I, the religion, or a small I, submission to God, which is possible for anyone yeah. without becoming a Muslim. And he said he wasn't sure about it. Okay. And that was, that was the end of that conversation. But fairly early on, so in about 2003, I met an Imam 
who was a chaplain at one of the universities in London. I was starting to explore the Quran because through the, the interfaith work that I was doing and the conversations, I was encountering the people who were saying, well, the Quran is a very negative book, and they'd pick out a particular verse, and they'd say, well, this, this is what Islam is all about. So I started to read very carefully the first nine chapters, which is usually where they're going, and began to see not what they were seeing. And I met with this imam, and we, we sat and we read a few passages together. Uh, so the beginning of Surah al-Baqarah, it talks about those who believe in the unseen. And he had this idea that when it talks about those people, and this includes the believers, that it's anyone who is in tune with the divine, with ultimate reality. But by that time, did you know that Muslims actually believe that uh, Islam is not a new thing? It's not a new religion at all? Mm, yes, because it says in, in the Quran about Abraham being the sort of prototype yeah. of the believers. So we go back to the Adam and Eve and Abrahamic faith and it mm. comes into your Moses, Jesus and everybody else. It's so um, we are, that's the problem. A lot of Muslims may be thinking that this is a new religion. It's not a new religion. It, we say it's, uh, it's a comprehensive uh, religion from beginning Adam to uh, Muhammad is the last of the prophet. It's, that's why you, 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 we find lots of things in the Quran. When you talked about Surah Baqarah, even myself, because you've been studying 18 years, more than me, regarding okay. Quran, honestly. Um, I become practicing later on in my life, and I, st I studied different tafsir and translations and different ones. But every translation has something unique. And we believe translation is not Quran, it's very close to Quran. Mm -hmm. Arabic is the Quran, so we call them translation, not Quran. Recently when I studied Quran, I find it's even Surah Baqarah, I think it was, it came down as a probably, nine years probably, isn't it? Like s slowly, a few ayat then mm -hmm. and then and then and then in Mecca, Medina, you name them. It took years and years came together. And when it came in one, one form or one surah, so the, the, the people who actually expert in that field, they, they said, look, it's not like in normal books. You read a story from beginning to the mm -hmm. end. Quran is not like that. Quran is just, he's talking to you. So he covers, he jumps. Yes. And that's for some people when they read the first time, you find it difficult to understand what's going on. We talked about Moses. Now we've gone to something else. We've gone to Medina, then we've gone to Mecca. So what they done, they, they said, they made it into nine chapters. They divided into nine chapters. And they said, look, first part, he talks about um, faith uh, and uh, no faith. And th at the end, so they call it a recomposition. And they say the first part and the last part meets. The second part and last second meets. Mm. The third and the, the last third meets. And in the middle we say you are the people of uh, middle nation. And it's exactly in the middle as well, in the by namely. So when I was reading, personally when I was reading, I went to, um, um, it's, it's, <laughs> it's a sad story to be honest. I born as a Muslim, so I went to this prayer place um, after my marriage, and they were praying silently. You know, some of the prayers we do silent, some of them are do. And I said to myself, "Why are they doing silently for?" I'm asking myself a question: Why are they doing silently? After the prayer, and I was, I was just cussing myself. What's wrong with me? How come I don't know my own faith? How far I went. And I couldn't help myself, just when emotionally I said, there's something wrong with me, what's going on? And then I said, well, I went home and I said, uh, on the same time actually I was, I met a brother and I said, I'm so, I feel so ashamed today that I, I'm confused. And that's when the starting of my journey towards Islam. And I first, the first, um, um, I started with the Surah Baqarah, first Ruku. And I couldn't stop crying. I couldn't stop because he was talking about um, hypocrites. And every, every line I read is just someone talking to me, it's you. You're saying you're a believer. You, you said you believe in Akhirah, you believe in Allah. But you're not, are you? You're not serious, are you? You say, I'm telling you not to do corruption. You're the one who's doing it and you think you're doing better. You know, like, uh, and he's going in that line. And I couldn't go on. I was saying, how did this book know about me? <laughs> And I stopped reading and I couldn't help it. Then after a while, my wife said, what's wrong with you today? 
I said, I don't know, man. I was reading this, this Quran today in translation, and I felt uh, uh, um, he's talking about me, that being a hypocrite, because I'm not living my, living my religion. And then on I went seriously, I moved on. So you read different, different translations. For you, first time and the last time, how was it for you? Was it easy and how was it? Yeah. So it's different every time. Uh, the first time probably was a bit hard. It was a Victorian translation. Um, and I think the translator actually had some issues with it. He, I don't think he was happy with everything that was in it. Um, it got easier after that time. So then was he, was the, most of the translation, the, the very old ones, are written by uh, our non-Muslim friends. Mm, so that one was um, by John Rodwell, who was the vicar at St Ethelburgers, now a Peace and Reconciliation Centre near Liverpool Street Station. So he was a Christian priest and um, he, he was interested in it and he wanted to open it up for discussion. Then the next translation I wrote, read was by someone called Dawood, who was an Iranian Jew, and uh, it's a penguin edition. Uh, I think after that I read Yusuf Ali, who's Muslim. Um, so most of the translations I read were <laughs> by very Muslims. <laughs> very interesting. Um, one of my friends actually uh, a few weeks ago, done, um, he's a South American, he came to my show and he said first he actually read read the Quran in, in Spanish, but written by a non-Muslim friend again. I know, I, I'm grateful to them, at least they've done it. Mm. I, I, I can't, um, we will have a different views, definitely. And he said, I read that book, and still it touched me. You know, it was, it's not a normal book, it touched me somewhere. He keeps talking about oneness of God, he talks mm. about how do you worship something, not even created anything, he's been created, how can you worship that thing? Tell me which part of the universe he created. You're worshipping him. Don't you use your intellect? Uh, don't you see the, the beauty of the universe that I created? Are, these are the signs to find me. Don't you see, why are you blindly following your, your culture or your parents or somebody? I never, I never brought you here to just to follow the culture. Mm. I, I, I created you with a, a special inner uh, um, understanding that you could see wrong and right. So, whatever you're worshipping, show me what he done for you. Show me how he benefits you. You know, those kind of things actually um, gives, when I was reading um, Tafsir of, not Tafsir, translation of Abdul Halim, I understood, I understood better of the, the creator than any other translation. Mm. Because it comes with the really, uh, really, uh, my way of, not my way, it's a really easy English he brings in. Mm. Some of the translation he made, I, it stucks me. I stop. I have to stop for a few minutes just to get my... Uh, one of the chapters he was talking about... Um, 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 the creation. He says, don't the non-believers see that um, the universe came from... Not Big Bang, but it came from this. Don't they see this? Or don't they ask the questions where it came from? Because nothing comes from nothing. Someone has to be there to create anything. Otherwise, it doesn't, everything we see, origin of everything, universe, humans, everything, is nothing. There's nothing there. It was not there. So when I read this thing, it stops me. That's the only translation that stops me. Mm. And to be honest, I, I, I run to another room and I just put my head in the floor and say, you know, I'm nothing. I can't use my intellect to find you. It's, I, I've got nothing. I just have to surrender to, to you. There's no other way. So, a lot of translations are there um, by our non-Muslim friends. With due respect, I, I, if they didn't do it, maybe Muslim wouldn't do it. Honestly, I don't know. I'm surprised. I'm very surprised. Even yourself, you said you studied yeah. first with the Christian one, then the Jewish one, then the Muslim. Yes. So you come already. You already mind is built up on somewhere and you come into it and... Well, translation is really important because it makes it accessible. So it says in the Quran, we've given you an Arabic scripture for Arab-speaking, Arab-reading people, or more speaking than reading. So they, they understood it. 
once it came out of that Arabic context, then unless people became fully skilled in Arabic, which happens rarely, then they need the translation. And it was the same with the Bible. So the early translations in Europe were in Latin, and only people who trained as priests and monks could read, and scholars could read the Latin. So people were dependent on the priest, which is the kind of issue that's talked about in the Quran, having to go to someone else for God's words. Um, so then Do you think we have the same problem? Do you think I we have the same I problem? I think so. So um, one example is there's something that happens in the interfaith movement called scriptural reasoning, where we get together to share our scriptures and we can find people in the Jewish tradition, rabbis and others, who can read the original language, can translate it and can understand it and can talk about it. And same in the Christian tradition, people who studied Hebrew and Greek and have a scholarly background and they can explain it. In the Muslim community, the, the lay people sometimes can do that, but often they're dependent mm. on the Imam who knows the Arabic and can explain it. And they, they defer to the Imam and they feel that they can't contribute. Mm. Whereas good point. in the Christian tradition, we have many good quality translations and hardly anyone knows the Greek and the Hebrew, but there's a, there's a vigorous discipline of reading it in a language which you can understand. Talking to a friend recently who's been a Muslim all her life, she talks about how she starts reading the Quran every Ramadan and gets to about Surah 10 and then runs out of steam. I said, okay, that's, that's unusual. Why is that? And she says she's reading it in the Arabic. So she ah, can read she, it. So she's not, that's another meaning. Well. That's so right. She can, she can pronounce it. She doesn't understand mm. it. She doesn't know what she's reading, although she can read it and recite it. So instantly you've, you're engaging with it in the original, but you've lost out on the content. Mm, that's good. That's a good point. Honestly, yeah. So another example is um, back in 2007, I spent two days on Itikaf in my friend's masjid in Nottingham. And Itikaf, I got it pronounced. Wonderful. And um, so I was there when they were reciting the last six of the Quran from Surah 49 to the end. And I had my English translation, which I was reading while they were reciting. And there were various young people who were sitting around me so they could see the English while it was being recited. Because there were probably about a handful of people in a packed yeah. masjid who actually understood the Arabic. So that's, that's an issue. Yeah, wow. And it's, it's a challenge for the community. That is true. That is true. Very true. You know, um, that's amazing. You've been in that car. That's, uh, that's, that's a beautiful thing. Your study... Uh, uh, Bible, the Old Testament, the New Testament. I, ov I, know, I couldn't do, s I, I did study myself as well, just to know. Um, I, I, we've been told not to be a blind flower. Mm. And how do I know, am I not a blind flower? So I wanted to study myself. I want to, I, we, we do a lot of interfaith stuff, so I wanted to understand them. So when I looked into Old Testament, actually, and about their faith as well, what they genuinely believe in, mm. different group of our Jewish communities. So I had a broad understanding that they have Article of Faith, about 13 Article of Faith. Um, and I went through all of them and it was very interesting for me. I said, wow, almost like a Muslim faith. The creator is uncreated and he's um, absolutely one. Um, I know, I don't know why they don't pronounce God. I don't know why they don't pronounce, uh, they right. don't do it. They yes. just put GED at the end, mm. in the middle. So with, um, probably extra care, I don't know why they would do it. that's their uh, thing. And about praying to God, about the prayers, about the um, um, life after death, almost similar to, to Islamic um, uh, belief. Mm. And, and the rulings, about, about the dress code, about the rulings, about the um, women pray separately like the men's do, about the cover of the women's, and about the kosher food and all that. I found it so amazing, honestly, I found it amazing. And I said to my friend, Imam friend, I said, why don't we walk together? 
you know, the difference is always going to be different. That difference we're talking about, 5% or 2% or whatever, it's going to be whoever you are. You're mm. never going to make it. Uh, you can't. If you become a Christian, you will have different views from different sects. If you're a Muslim, you have Shia Sunnis. You have, so you will have that. You can't get rid of that. But if we want to work together, can you imagine if you have 90% of the stuff mm. is, yeah. is similar? Why don't we work together? And I found it strange. He said, do we really have the similarities? I said, we do. Because uh, when Allah said we're following the Abrahamic faith, you know we're going to have similarities, definitely. And that was the amazing part of my journey towards uh, interfaith vehicular. We can work together. There is, no, uh, there is no other way. And God is pushing us to work together. Mm. That's the thing, he's pushing us to work together. When it comes to um, your studying Bible and the Quran and the Old Testament, how do you see, how do you, um, see these things too, mm. in, in, in your view, that we're all claiming this is the word of God. Yeah. How do you see it? So I, I, treat, I treat them the same. The Bible is scripture, the Quran is scripture. Um, in terms of what they are as books and how they are understood within the traditions, there are differences. So the Quran says, this is the word of God. It's the direct speech of God. It's all in quotation marks. And it was from God to, to Muhammad via Gabriel, yes. And um, the Bible isn't like that. The Bible has some direct words. So in the prophets, in the Hebrew scriptures, you get the prophet being told to go with a message which says, thus saith the Lord. Mm. But you also have like the seerah, the biography of Jesus, if you like, the hadiths. The all in one. All together. All together. Yes. All together. So for us as a Muslim, what we find difficult is that which words, some people say that about 3% or 8% of the words in the Bible are from Jesus directly. You could, you could relate mm -hmm. to. Yep. The rest of them are historian. They wrote it down, what they saw like you said, and, and the hadith, you're just saying his biographic lifestyle as well. So for us as a Muslim, if he said, Jesus said, it's proven, we have to follow, you know. And um, so that's where they care, it's difficult to judge which part and which part is not. So anyway, we don't have much time. Honestly, I didn't Sorry. realize that we went so fast. As a um, researcher and doing this for 18 years, does it cross your mind um, that Old Testament and what we say Last Testament Quran talks about oneness of God and not to uh, worship anything besides God. But you as a follower of Jesus, you believe in Trinity. Does it f frightens you? Does it give you that, is it possible that I'm worshipping a, a Jewish um, um, scholar, you can say, or oh, Jesus is a Jewish man. Does it give you the uh, uncomfortable? No, because the way Jesus is presented in the Gospels, he is so identified with God, particularly in John's Gospel. And I think John's Gospel is the one that people really need to read to understand where Christians are coming from and where the theology of the Trinity came from. Even though the word isn't in there, the, the building blocks are all there because Jesus says, I and the Father are one. So in the portrayal of Jesus, and obviously anyone can argue with how that is, he is so identified with God that it was natural for people to see him in that way. And that's the message which comes out at a, an early stage in history. So the the creeds came a few hundred years later, but the things which led up to those creeds go right back to the scriptures in the New Testament. Brilliant. So you got uh, uh, about 30 seconds just to say to our viewers, um, the work we do together, like interfaith work, why is it so important? It's really important because if we don't do it, we don't even know how much we have in common with each other. Once we realise how much we have in common with each other, we can begin to have some really interesting conversations, build good relationships, do work together, 
appear on each other's programs, visit each other's places of worship, sit and read scripture with each other. There's so many possibilities. Brilliant. Thank you for your time today. Uh, I really enjoyed and I learned so much from you too, Jazak Mullah Khair. May Allah bless you and you keep you in the straight path like everybody else. Dear brothers and sisters, uh, make dua for us. We, I know at the time went so fast, um, I had a lot of things to know from him. I couldn't do it. Maybe you have to make another program with him. Uh, thank you for being with us. If you said anything wrong, please do forgive us and make dua for us. And hope to see you next time, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.